All right, we've made it to the final episode of the July 2022 Brimfield Flea Market. This very well could be the best episode yet, because if you stick with me till the end, you'll see that I ran across a film crew actually filming a uh, TV show for HGTV. But first, let's see what cool stuff we can find for sale. Here's a nice collection of antique glass paperweights. Uh, it's hard to tell how old they are with glass like that, but um, I, I do think they're fairly old, probably from the 1920s, 30s, 40s would be my guess. Uh, my grandmother had a large collection of these, and I actually inherited a few of them. But I think they're really fascinating with all the air bubbles and different colors inside. They're pretty much a unique item. There's no one that's exactly like the other. I'm pretty sure that's the largest collection of globes I've ever seen in one spot before. Hmm. Never seen anything like that before. No. Very you put a candle in there? No, there's crabs on the back. Huh. Well, a crab. Just decorative? Yeah. And this is probably the biggest collection of eagle models I've ever seen in one spot before. Very patriotic. The Mystery of Thug Island. That's actually a 1964 Italian-German film, which I've never heard of before. But it kind of reminds me of uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yep. Now, I don't know much about furniture, but this looks like, was this mid-century modern? Is that what they call it? Uh, it looks very Brady Bunch to me. And this cork lamp is almost $600. I don't know what that type of thing normally goes for, but that's definitely more than I was looking to pay today. Uh, but it actually doesn't surprise me too much because this area here of Brimfield tends to be very expensive. Uh, it's a lot of professional dealers as far as I can tell. So I usually don't go in those areas honestly. Now this is definitely more my style. Now this got me really excited here. This is a Polaroid SX70 instant camera, still in the original box. Um, from 1972 to 1974, I think it was one of the most popular instant cameras out there. And it still has a cult following today. I actually have one, not with the original box though. Um, the sad thing is the box is destroyed. It looks like water damage of some sort. And I looked inside and there appeared to be damage to the camera. But if that were in pristine condition, I definitely would have thought about picking that up. Here's more of that mid-century modern Brady Bunch furniture. It's a pretty cool looking couch, but uh, very expensive. I think it said $900 on the tag there, as far as I can remember.
At first I thought these were original uh, wheel caps or center caps for wheels, but uh, they're actually just cheap plastic reproductions. Is that true? Good. Some spooky skulls. Very intricate uh, skulls, though. Those are kind of cool. One thing that I like to collect that I rarely see for sale are ship's half models like this. Basically it's a model of half of a ship mounted on a board. This one is not that old. I would guess it's maybe 20 to 30 years old max. But I was definitely interested in it. And I ended up picking it up for only 10 bucks, so it seemed like a good deal to me. <clears throat> Can I help you with anything? Uh, how much is the half model? The boat? Oh, I think he's got a price on it. Yeah, I didn't see one. Um, I think he wants 10 or 12 dollars. Yeah. Is that the box for it? Yeah, that, we keep it in the box so oh, that it okay. stays nice. Here's a bottle of Virginia Dare soda. I've actually never heard of it before. I looked it up online and I guess this was around until about the 1970s, but I'm not sure how old this bottle is specifically. It seems to have come in various different flavors, and the flavor would have been listed on the cap, which is long gone. So if anybody's ever had that before, let me know. What were the flavors? What did it taste like? Is it like any other sodas we have today? Let me know. Yeah. Yeah, like I've said before, this was one of the hottest shows I've ever been to, and my mom there was looking at that fan saying how that would be nice to have today, and it sure would. It was steamy, to say the least. in a bit. Everything on this table was a dollar and I, I love that when everything's a dollar. Some of the stuff is worth more than a dollar, some of it is worth way less than a dollar, but um, it's great to look through all this stuff. I didn't see anything though that really jumped out at me as uh, something I wanted to pick up. Is there anything on the table that you would have picked up that I didn't? I like that propeller there. That would look nice hanging on my wall. Does anybody know what kind of plane that's from? I have no clue. Here's a nice old Victrola 78 RPM phonograph. 
I have a broken one at home, but I would love to have one that works. They're so cool. This old push moped here. I think this is probably mid to late 70s based on its appearance. Could probably get that going again, just needs some service, I'm sure. Now, these ice cream cones here, I'm sure you've seen these before in stores and in restaurants. I would say they're fairly modern and really not collectible as far as I know but I think he was asking 125 for them which to me I don't understand that I can definitely see how this ET here is collectible but this one is not that old I don't believe based on this tag here this tag looks like 1990s or later he's asking $675 for it which I don't know if that's a good price or not but that's definitely on the high end and this Yoda here is pretty cool I, I don't know how old that is though <laughs> This old Admiral TV really caught my eye. This is a 1950s model. Not sure when in the 1950s. Uh, they're asking 50 bucks for it, which sounds like a good price. I doubt it works. Um, if you saw one of my previous videos, I mentioned a YouTuber named Shango66, and he restores TVs like that. And that definitely looks like something right up his alley. Yeah, we'll put it right over in right here. A little bit. That ear was damaged when I got it. And the foot, I have the piece right here. I set it on the steel top this morning. When oh. It came. Just when it just touched yep. it, the foot broke. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what that is, right? Carnival? Chalkware? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen similar items like this. Yep. I'll sell it to you for 30 bucks. Got the little piece. Yeah, if it wasn't damaged, I probably would No, if it wasn't it. damaged, it'd be 130. Yeah. All right, thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> what? Two nuns. Oh, yeah, sure. I love this old playground equipment. You don't see these too often uh, anymore in playgrounds. Probably because they were dangerous, because you could go uh, right off the front and land on your head. But that's what made it fun.
If you're still watching the video at this point, thank you. Uh, according to YouTube, people seem to click off my video at about 10 to 12 minutes for some reason. So if you're still with me, thanks a lot. Keep watching, there's more to come. these games. I remember back in the 80s before, you know, we had too many video games and cell phones and whatever. This is what we did for fun. And it is kind of fun for about a minute or two. No price. I don't know. Not me. In one of my earlier videos, I remember mentioning how um, I'll see a theme of certain things at flea markets, and this year it was scales. So I think this was a scale out of a uh, probably a deli, and I saw I think two or three more at the show, which is unusual. Here's an antique uh, stamp dispenser. I'm not sure if this would have been in a post office or in a store, but it looks like it's probably from the 60s. That's my best guess. Here's something that I've always wanted since I was a kid. This yellow thing here is a Geiger counter. You know, basically it detects radiation. And I think it would just be fun to have to see what is radioactive. It might uh, be surprising what is. First, I thought this was an original Masters of the Universe toy from the early 80s, but I'm pretty sure that's a uh, re-release or a reproduction, probably from the 90s or maybe 2000s. The original ones are very expensive.
Here's the reason why you should always look down to see what's on the ground, because this is a copy of OutRun for the Sega Master System. I actually had this when I was a kid. It's from, I think, about 1986 or so, and I actually don't know why I didn't pick it up. It was in really good condition, only 20 bucks. Who knows, maybe it'll be there in September. Fingers crossed. This vendor here always has these great lawn ornaments. Uh, a lot of them are the same from show to show, but they'll often be something completely different too. And I definitely would pick one of these up someday if I ever get a lawn. I think that's the key. Need a lawn for a lawn ornament. I'm not an expert on glassware, so I can't really tell you much about this stuff here. I would say some of it's depression glass. I don't know which ones, um, honestly. But the green ones there on the left, closest to me, are, I'm pretty sure, uranium ware, or um, Vaseline ware, they're also called. They're actually radioactive. Not dangerous, but they are radioactive. So if I had that Geiger counter, I'd be able to use it right now. The rest of it looks like stuff I would have seen in my grandmother's cupboard back in the 80s. Here's a big old uh, 78 RPM record player. Uh, only 250 today, and it looks like 395 the rest of the time. My grandfather, Bradley, had one of these in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> and it worked. It's not a bad price, I don't think. 250? No. Well, let me look at the This guy had a lot of really great intricately carved wooden statues and sculptures, but um, I'm honestly not sure if these are mass produced or not. Um, the thing that makes me think they might be mass produced is that you'll see lots of copies of a single type of item, so I don't know. But either way, they're pretty nice. I would just be afraid of, uh, you know, breaking one and trying to bring it home. You can just imagine like a wing wing tip breaking off or something. I was really interested in picking up one of these sculptures here. I'm pretty sure these are concrete. And the prices weren't bad. He had, a, I think, a $5 table, $10 table, $15 table, and up. So the prices were pretty good. The quality's not amazing. But, you know, for something you would put in your garden, they're pretty nice. And they had pretty much every type of animal you could imagine, other than the type I was looking for, which was a Boston Terrier. So if I had seen a Boston Terrier, I would have picked one up for sure. Which one's a five dollar table? Oh. I was also pretty tempted to pick up one of these skulls. Because they've got like an alien skull there, 
I guess that's a clown skull with the uh, little clown nose. And then the one on the left there is actually covered in tiny little skulls. So those would make a pretty good Halloween decoration. I got really excited here for a second when I saw these two red uh, rotary telephones. I've always been looking for a red or an orange telephone like this, but they're always way more expensive than any of the other colors. Probably because they kind of look like uh, Batman's red telephone from the 1960s Batman show. But someday I'll find one, you know, cheap enough that I'll pick it up. It will happen. This was pretty interesting. These look like they were probably in a carnival or maybe a circus or on a merry-go-round. I'm not really sure, but uh, they definitely look vintage. I'm not sure how old, but uh, they're pretty cool. Definitely out of my price range. Not even going to ask the price on those. Something from the airport, for the airlines would use. Oh, yeah. Korean Airlines. Yeah. But it looks old. Yeah, it does. This is a nice uh, painting of Venice. And this booth seems to have mostly holiday themed items, so like mostly Christmas and then also Halloween here. I remember my grandmother used to have one of these uh, ceramic Christmas trees here where you put the little lights in it and they light up. I remember at the time they didn't seem like anything special, but those go for quite a bit of money now, amazingly. You can buy new ones for not too much money, but those um, older ones, those antique ones, are crazy expensive. That police car is pretty amazing. Looks like 1950s to me, but it almost doesn't look like a toy. It seems too big to be an actual toy. I wonder if it was a like a display model of some sort. And these are a bunch of old, I think, 8mm and 16mm uh, film. <laughs> Table seem better, Dave. Eh? Oh my god, it's going south. We don't have the truck. Yeah. One a day vitamins. I didn't know one a day vitamins were that old. That looks like it's from the 50s or 60s. I always thought that was a newer brand of vitamins, but I guess not.
These are some pretty creepy paintings, if you ask me. Now, this was the most exciting part of the show for me. See this film crew here? I actually didn't notice them at first. My mom had to point them out. They were actually filming an episode of a show called uh, Houses with History from HGTV. I've never seen it. I don't get cable. But I guess it's sort of like uh, Flea Market Flip or something like that. So the Brimfield Market will be on this show at some point. I have no I idea when the episode's going to air. But uh, keep an eye out for that. I think the hosts are the three people there right in the center of the frame. It's probably for one of those HGTV shows or something. Oh, probably. I almost wanted to follow them around the show, but I don't know. I think that would have been a little bit too creepy. And there you have it. That's the end of the July 2022 Brimfield Flea Market. I hope you enjoyed it. The uh, September Brimfield show will be coming up in just a couple weeks from the uh, airing of this episode. So I'll have those videos up not too long after that, probably uh, mid to late September. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. According to YouTube, 90% of you watching this video are not subscribed. So if you could subscribe, that would really make my day. And uh, feel free to leave a comment if you liked the video. Even if you didn't like it, leave a comment. Um, you know, I want to know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. And I'm trying to make these videos better every time. So... Again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.